All right. Hi, Jonathan. Hey, for those of you who were a couple of, here a couple of weeks ago, you heard me talk about using strong referral language to introduce the people that you trust us to the people that you care about, your friends, family, uh, your, your past clients. Um, and we talked a little bit about how that strong referral language can help with your conversion rates, right? You all remember that? Yes. Okay, so um, there's a counterpoint to that as well, right? The person who's being referred, in other words, if you want business, if you want me to refer to you, the person that's being referred has to set that up properly. I have to know about you. Let me give you a great example. Let's suppose that we had a category for pizza. And somebody came in, yeah, great category. And this new pizza guy comes in, and I run into somebody that needs pizza, and I say, you absolutely, positively have to try this pizza. It's the best pizza on the planet, and the name of the place is Chuck E. Cheese's. Right? What's wrong with that? The, what their product is, what their brand is, doesn't match what I just referred. Does that make sense? Right? You have to help us. If you want me to refer you, if you want other people in the group to refer you, you have to help us understand what your brand is. You have to help us understand what it is that you do and how you do it well and differently from everyone else. And you need to be consistent in that. Here's a question for you. What is your brand? Is your brand your tagline? No. Is your brand what you say it is when you're talking up here? If I say relax, the hard part's done, is that my brand? No. What's my brand? My brand is what other people think of me. Right? It's their image of me in their mind. So if I stand up here and I say, relax, the hard part's done, and I dress like this, and I say, I'm a CPA, not a mortgage lender, I'm a CPA, and I say, refer me to your Fortune 500 client friends, and I hand you a business card that's perforated all around the outside because I printed it on my laptop, <laughs> and then I'm 45 minutes late to the meeting that I have with you, and I completely blow off the fact that I just abused your day, that's now a part of my brand, right? So do your one-on-ones, establish your brand, but be intentional about it. Everything about it should match up with the business you're trying to get. There's nothing wrong with the business that Chuck E. Cheese is doing. But if I send somebody to Chuck E. Cheese telling them it's the best pizza on the planet, and what it is is a, is a game room with cardboard pizza, they're going to be disappointed, right? Because I didn't know their brand. Help us understand your brand. That means you have to figure out what it is. Some of you have a, a real solid understanding of that, and some of you have been coming to the, the branding sessions that we do here to try, and, to try and help you with that. But focus on your brand and focus on communicating that to us so that instantly, when we think of a place to go and let go of our kids and not have to worry about them and spend a little bit of time in adult conversation, grown-up conversation, rather than adult conversation, <laughs> Spend a little bit of time in grown-up conversation. Chuck E. Cheese is what comes to mind. That's a great place for my wife and I to go with our kids on a, on a Friday evening when we just don't care about anything except the fact that we don't have to think about them and we can focus on each other for a little bit. That's a great brand. Not great pizza, but a great brand. Right? So, do your one-on-ones. Get to know each other. And focus on what it is that your specialty is and how you can communicate that to us so that instantly, when I think of property and casualty insurance, I know what brand Jody is, and I also know what brand State Farm is. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, have a great week. Thanks so much.